in particular, we're looking for risks and harms that people may or may not be aware of in, in really any kind of connected service. When the internet was built, it really didn't contemplate what are the social norms. So, but we still need independent um, analysis and evaluation to, to keep you know, everybody safe and um, to keep it fair and reasonable. Um, so none of the regulation is adequate for that. Hello everyone, I am Sergio Maldonado and this is Masters of Privacy, a set of interviews covering the intersection of marketing, data, privacy and technology with a clear goal in mind which is redefining the relationship between people, brands and publishers around transparency and control. Which is to say, we're aiming for real customer centricity or if you will, human centricity. It may take us 5 years, 10 years or more, but we're patient. We're enjoying the ride, pushing our ideas farther with every single one of our guests. Speaking of which, let's get on with the show. Okay, we have Lisa Levasseur with us today. She is an MBA technologist with a background in computer science and philosophy. She has been a software professional for over 30 years working at Motorola and participating in plenty of initiatives and standards that we all know today like the IETF or the Internet Engineering Task Force, which I have mentioned a lot in the context of cookies and browser technologies, the W3C and the IEEE. We will talk about the Me2B Alliance or the me to business Alliance as opposed to P2C, which is a non-profit organization with a mission to come up with a sort of consumer-facing certification mark to let people know if technology is treating them with dignity. Of course, privacy is a big part of this, but we have Lisa here to explain it properly. So, let's get on with it. Lisa, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here, Sergio. Let me ask you, just to get started, what is Me2B? Yeah, so the Me2B Alliance is an organization that's creating the standard for respectful technology, like literally an industry standards setting organization. And so we are creating a technical specification for what it means for technology to be respectful. And to be clear, we're, we're measuring the behavior of technology. One way to think about it is, you know, measuring the ethical behavior of technology. And we, we tend to use the term ethical and respectful kind of interchangeably. They sort of mean the same thing to us. And another way to look at what we're doing is like independent automobile crash testing, but for technology. So we're, we're trying to be an independent organization. We are an independent you know, nonprofit in the US and we are um, independently measuring the behavior of technology. In particular, we're looking for risks and harms that people may or may not be aware of in, in really any kind of connected service, whether it's a website, a mobile app, IoT device, or any anything that can be connected. So would this boil down to automated standards? Meaning, are you planning to build tools so that these things can be, the ethical sort of benchmark can be uh, sort of enforced automatically or would it entail simply a code of conduct or an audit process like ISO or how do you approach this? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, Initially, it's pretty manual, right? It's because because this is such a new territory, and we're we're trying to bridge this chasm from really sort of lofty principles to practical, measurable, objectively measurable things. And um, so it's pretty hands-on right now. We've been working on the spec for a couple of years. We're going to publish version 1.0. My concern about version 1.0 is that I, it's conceivable that two independent testers could come up with different interpretations. So we're, it, it, this is going to take some time. This is a long game for us. I do think eventually we will have automated um, capabilities uh, for vendors to do, um, you know, kind of spot checking on certain things. I, I'm not sure how, you know, ideally we get totally, um, totally automated, but I'm not sure if that will be possible. And it's not um, this, this is not intended to be a self-reported thing. 
because we've done a lot of research. We do a lot of research every step of the way with me's mostly trying to really bridge, bridge that gap. And um, people have expressed skepticism about self-reported, um, you know, kind of credentialing from organizations. So we think it's important for us to do independent testing. Um, but to scale in the way that we need, we're going to have to have automation in some capacity. Yeah, because sort of self-reporting sounds like codes of conduct in, in ad tech. Yeah, and, and so the, to be really clear, we're not measuring the behavior of the company, right? There, there is a lot of that. We're also, you know, we're not reproducing um, standards that already exist, especially around like security, for example, which is very mature kind of um, standardization and certification processes. We're really looking at this new, um, new way of looking at technology for what is respectful behavior by the technology itself. And here's my visual hmm. aid as I say this. I have, I'm holding my phone in my hand and I say, this is not a tool. This is a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like, I just kind of want to leave this out there for people and just let that set. You know, this is not a tool. This is a relationship. Because once you start to, and it is, I mean, we're talking to it where it's behaving more and more like a, a technology is behaving more and more like a person. It, it, we're using it. We're having an intimate dialogue 24 seven with these various tools in our lives. So, but if we look at it like a relationship, I, I don't need to instruct you on what a respectful relationship is. You already know what a re, what constitutes a respectful relationship for you. Everybody, I mean, socially animals, you know, as social animals, we know what that is. And so we're really just taking that as our kind of ethical foundation and mapping that into things like, you know, uh, private by default, right? Like that's a respectful default. We, as humans, we're private by default. We typically do not like divulge and disclose every detail about ourselves to strangers. We are private by default. So we can take that as one very small nugget of, you know, a respectful behavior and, and quite readily adapt that and measure it in technology. Very good, because you, you mentioned uh, the me's in passing, and we forgot to say me to be, of course, is me to business. And, and now that you're holding your device, your phone, that may be a good segue to get into the the uh, illustration that I saw on your website where you explained different layers. Yeah. Well, people should go to our website and look at, there's a little five minute video on unpacking me to be relationships. But um, so I'm an engineer and words matter a lot to me and accuracy of words matter a lot. And, you know, in thinking about, and just the, the time that we've been looking at this, is it really like, what is a me to be relationship? And, and we have them in, in the physical world and we have them in the digital world. And in the physical world, quite often they are literally me to be, like we are going to a place and patronizing a business, you know? Um, and, and it gets a little more complicated than that, but, but in the digital world, it's, it's not a simple one-to-one. -one. It's not literally a me to be relationship. There's, there's, there's a whole network of relationships involved and like a simple, I'll go back to the phone, yeah. you know, just the simple phone relationship. I'm having a legal relationship first and foremost. And this, this is a big departure from the physical world. I say this analogy quite a lot. If the digital, if the physical world were like the digital world, I'd have to sign a contract to buy a loaf of bread, right? Yes. Like we have these weird norms and that's really what we're all about is really questioning and, and, yeah, reestablishing norms, because the when the when the internet was built, it really didn't contemplate what are the social norms and and what are the social norms that are physical world and how do we preserve those and bring them into this digital world? Just didn't happen, and um, it's time to do that now. So, so first of all, like if I get a phone, the very first thing I, I have to do is create a a legal contract, a binding legal contract with the service provider, with the the phone manufacturer and the service provider for that matter. Um, and then also, so, but then I use the phone and I start to develop a kind of attitude, a sort of valence of, 
you know, I love this, I hate this or whatever, you know, an emotional connection. And, and we call, we call that a me to P, a me to product experience. And, and that's really kind of, or me to brand, you might think about it, me to brand. And that's really kind of the visceral emotional connection people have with, with a thing. But under the hood of that, there can be a lot of um, integrated technologies that, and the individual has no awareness of these. And yet their information may be, be shared with these third parties, these integrated players. Um, and so, so it's already complicated even at that layer, but then you know, the individual goes to the app store and downloads an app. And then there's a whole new me to p relationship and a whole new legal contract and a whole new bunch of, we call them B2B hidden affiliates, right? The strange bedfellows that you didn't know you were kind of <laughs> establishing these sort of weird uh, quasi relationships with. And so it quickly gets very, very, um, you know, untenable um, sort of even consciously to like contemplate what's really happening. So, so the long and short of it is that me to b really wasn't quite accurate, you know, to, to really reflect what was happening. And so we felt like we needed to tease that out a bit. I think this goes beyond privacy, right? We keep thinking about private. I, I keep thinking about privacy. And the reality is that this goes beyond towards these contractual relationships. Everything that started with click wrap contracts or brass wrap contracts, and it may entail a privacy challenge. So this, this personal data involved, but even if it's not, those layers that you describe, they're really a challenge for people. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm glad you said that um, and picked up on that. We don't say privacy very often. You know, I, I referred to private by design. That's kind of the one exception. But, but our, privacy is too narrow a lens. And that's why we've gone toward the me to be respectful tech specification. That's the name of our specification because it is broader than just privacy. And, um, and actually there's another, there's another piece to this tutorial and we're just trying to create these sort of um, materials, educational materials on our website. But in our spec, we had to get more granular in order to create test cases. And so we have this lens of a me to be relationship over time. And again, it's this layered me to be relationship sort of shorthand for a lot of different stuff happening <laughs> in that me to be relationship. And there's an arc over time. And in that arc, you create, and, and you're actually exposed to opportunities to create a bunch of different commitments. Some of those legal, some of them, you know, just agreements um, of some sort. So for instance, cookie consent, that's the first one you might see on a website, for example. And you're confronted with a decision to be made, right? You know, what do I wanna share? What don't I wanna share? You might also get a little pop-up that says this site wants to use your location. Do you let it? We call these me to be commitments and you go on, right? You might do a one-off transaction without creating an account. You might sign up for a newsletter. You might, each one of those has a kind of um, quid pro quo. There's a kind of like um, behavioral economics calculus that we do depending on how we feel about that brand or that site or that business or whatever we think we're dealing with. Um, and it culminates with what we call the me to be marriage, which is that moment in time when you create credentials, right? And, and you ask, and this I go back to Joe Andrews' great work on functional identity, you ask to be remembered, recognized, and responded to, personally responded to. Up until that point, we contend you should not be personally recognized, remembered, and responded to. You should have anonymity. Um, yeah, so that, that's another big piece of our kind of, we had to come up with all this kind of vocabulary scaffolding to describe what's happening because if we can't describe it, we can't measure it. So first, I'm, I'm trying to, to connect me to be with the things that I've seen around us and things that help us get towards that human centricity what many would call the, again, customer centricity, where we start from people and then we get to whatever they want to do instead of the other way around, which is what we've been sort of uh, suffering. <laughs> so the value of me to be that I perceive uh, from, the, from the mostly outside is that these are companies that I can trust farther. Well, I, I, I'm loath to use that word for a lot of different reasons. 
Um, also, just as a reminder, we are not measuring businesses. We are measuring websites, mobile apps, products. We are measuring each thing. So we're not we're not prepared to make statements about you know like an entire organization. We're really focused on quite um, you know uh, anatomically on these apps and websites to start out with. Yes. And w- the way I think about it is a lot of us have that like one or two good friend who's super smart and knows what's happening under the hood and, you know, either legally or technically what's really going on with a company. And we ask them like, Oh, you know, I want to, I want to install this kind of app. Should I do it or not? You know, this app. And they'll tell us, so where's that good friend? We're like that good friend that you might ask, but we've got legal experts. We've got usability and, and, you know, um, manipulation and in the interface experts, we've got technical under the hood data flow experts, we've got security experts, you know, we've got this kind of battery of expertise that will eventually culminate in a kind of badge that will say, you know, this has been me to be certified. One, yeah, and and one interesting thing about that is we, we probably won't get there until next year, even though we have the certification and we're already testing and auditing products. Because here's the thing, those norms that we talk about, the digital world norms, they vary from industry vertical to industry vertical. And our rubric, like the way our, our, our heuristic for measuring go uh, scoring goes from minus three to plus one. Because again, we're like crash testing, right? We're really looking for the nuance of the potential harms and risks. So those go from minus one to minus three, minus three being the worst, minus one being, you know, not so bad. Zero is terrific, right? Zero is (laughs) no harms detected. That's great. Plus one means they've, they've done something unusual. Like for instance, we've been evaluating some stuff and um, not, not to unduly pick on, on Facebook, but there is a, a large company that we've been looking at and they've, they're not, they're deliberately not advertising on Facebook, which is unusual talking about norms that that that's a bold step that's a courageous step and we give that a plus one in our rubric and um and, but the point is we don't know where passing is in there like passing is probably going to be minus one point something right so because they're all like no nobody's going to get a zero Sad but true. Nobody's going to get a zero, and we're still we we have to go back and do more research because we're coming up, we're we, you know we're kind of coming up bumping against these norms, and and the companies are saying, but this is the norm. This we've always done it this way. Nobody's ever complained about this, and we're like, well, we think it's wrong, and, and we agree to disagree, but we need to go and do some additional research with Mies to figure out, are we capturing the voice of Mies? And this is like. The, another big thing, like I've been in industry standards for off and on for, I don't know how many years, 20 some odd years in telecom. And um, the big, one of the biggest problems with, with industry standards is that there's no everyday people. There's no, like the end users of the technology are, you know, academic theoretical ideas, <laughs> you know, they're, they're not involved. And so we're, we're, a big problem, in fact, we're grappling with this in the past couple of months is like bringing the voice of everyday me's into the technical spec itself. How do you bridge that? That's actually a really, really difficult thing because people, especially in the US, have like very little awareness of what's really happening in technology. Europe is better, but the US is, um, yeah, not the same. I see a sort of matryoshka door if it makes sense, in terms of the different layers, because you said, yeah, there's compliance, right? And people look at compliance and it seems like if you comply, then why would you need to have another layer? And something that we've been facing in the past few months since we had, since you talk about Europe, the GDPR, is that you could very well comply, like Facebook will comply. Yeah. It doesn't mean that exactly that you're aligned with any ethical standards. In fact, as you can see yourself as well, in many, in many instances, very often companies that have it easier to comply, they may even have found protection in the regulatory framework. Now they have a better excuse not to comply on the other side of things, which is the ethical side of things, so transparency, control, personal agency. And so I was looking at this Matryoshka door 
as I was saying, we have sort of compliance, like in Europe, it'd be GDPR and the privacy or the privacy directive, now e privacy regulation. Then you will have on top of that, a layer that could be privacy by design, which we share with many other countries, right? Many other spaces or so privacy by design principles, which go a bit farther and they're also within the GDPR. So article 25, we have it there. Yeah. Then you have another layer, which is like all of these environments, like my data that I've been uh, pre-involved with, where you've got my data principles. And then you've got even more specific that are even AI standards, you know, AI data ethics, or those that are very, very specific to a, to a use case. And if you start looking at the Matryoshka, it will get very, very hard for consumers, right? Unless they go to the top layer, to a single point of reference, because if reference is the law, I don't think you have a good, I don't think it's a good start. No. I feel like me to be could really encompass all of this. First, because of what you're saying, there could be a process where you could even have a batch on certain websites and apps precisely because you aim for the specific interaction, the website, the app, rather than the business as a whole. And then on the sec secondly, because of that, you may be able to come up with self-enforcement or sort of, again, tools where I can choose to only work with services that automatically are filtered out by whatever I've got on my client technology or how that does it make any sense yeah well there's a lot in there um yeah sorry <laughs> it's a it's an evocative picture um so i'm going to start with the inner layer the inner doll of regulation because you're hitting square on something that is our observation regulation doesn't go far enough right i mean for the same reason we have automobile crash testing, right? Like we don't regulate every little myopic possible harmful thing, right? So, but we still need independent um, analysis and evaluation to, to keep, you know, everybody safe and um, to keep it fair and reasonable. Um, so none of the regulation is adequate for that. So that is like the, the innermost thing. And we do have, we have a policy and legal working group, by the way, and we are working, um, you know, primarily in the U.S. on sort of advocacy around certain, because federal level, um, something is, is going to happen soon, very, you know, relatively soon here. And of course, we have CCPA and um, there, there's a real uh, disrespectful element in the CCPA, I'll say, that I have been advocating um about for for a little while um and i'll just leave it at that <laughs> and it's and it's really the whole it's the whole like opt out it's the opt out it's completely disrespectful and i you know i keep raising this like it's not legal in europe why are we doing it here you know and and anyway that's a that's a whole big ball of wax <laughs> um yeah i think virginia is, is trying some but you're right i i saw you wrote a letter to gavin yeah. newsom Right. Yeah. Well, we were just we just published that we're just kind of, you know, kind of we're just taking baby steps with this and and we're trying to figure out our policy, you know, like kind of our advocacy for for me's and in the US. And so we did we crafted a letter to Governor Newsom requesting a series of eight town halls to bring together concerned citizens and, um, you know, lawmakers and privacy experts and technology experts and you know um, businesses even to talk about a lot of the kind of gray areas in that law and in a lot of the you know implementation details that are very tricky and so we felt that um, we just wanted to encourage that we've seen that in other places and it's been very effective and we felt like that that should be happening there also going back to your yeah that was the law that was sort of the inner <laughs> that was yeah that was i'm, I'm going to go out to the biggest one now and just say that um we have on our website a digital harms dictionary and we're we're turning that into a more interactive and most likely a wiki um kind of experience and it's huge right now and there's a lot of stuff in there so so there's everything from like data collection practices to ai behaviors to I mean, it's just a huge swath of, of potential harms. Um, 
if you look at like the Center for Humane Technology, they're very much, I call it kind of up the stack and the harms. And we're sort of starting out down table stakes, you know, very sort of atomic level um, harms that were in our version 1.0 of our spec. But there's this whole spectrum. And um, I, I say that we'll know we're done with our work when our spec matches all of the harms that are in the dictionary, which is God knows when that will ever happen, <laughs> you know, years and years away. The other point I want to make about that is we will not test everything. And so we envision um, a lot of different organizations kind of, I call it touching some part of the elephant, right? That parable of everybody's touching a different part of the elephant. And, um, you know, ideally we would like to synthesize that stuff and present it to the individual so that if they put up, pull up, a website, uh, the name of a website or a, an app, they can see the whole array of certifications or whatever that have been um, performed against. Okay, so that'd be sort of the end game, right? If once me to be has met, it has accomplished most of its goals, then we have an internet where I can see once it gets somewhere or I install an app, I can see that they either, or maybe I can see even they've got a minus two and I'll run away or they've got a zero and then I'll stay. Yeah, and, and, we're, and that's like, that's a whole big thing. That's a whole big art of how do we present the information for people? And in California, I don't know if you've seen this, but in California at restaurants, they have a score like an A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, yeah. And so um, that is a very simple user interface, right? People totally. look at that and they see anything other than A and they're like, eh, I don't know about that. And so we're hoping to get to something with our certification mark that is that simple. That is either, you know, like, yeah, just, just very, very simple. And you can drill down into, like, if you're a member, you'll be able to drill down into the details. But if you're not, if you're just in the public, you'll at least be able to see the high level. So then the challenge that I see and the biggest question I've got is do you think this will work with the involvement of the bees, of the businesses themselves? Or do you think you can run away with this and just do it without them? Yeah, well, it's, and that's actually kind of a big challenge for us right now. I, I want to work with bees because they build the stuff and it's super important that they agree with our standard, with our yardstick for what respectful means, because if they don't, then it's, we're, you know, dead in the water basically. So I want to work with bees. We're working with bees who, who want to do the right thing, frankly. And, and so, and, and it's been hugely um, illuminating, I think for both sides, again, like kind of just figuring out, we've set this pretty high bar and realizing where all the pain points are for a bee and in terms of this high bar that we've set. Something is going to happen. It is true the world is becoming, the, it's not just corporate social responsibility and all this. It's just that uh, companies really want to be more ethical. That is true. And for now, I guess it's all talk and uh, for most companies. And the minute you start seeing competitors or any other companies with that sort of level, then that, that jump will probably happen, right? I guess that's part of this. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the whole thing is we think that I, I describe what we're doing a lot like a flashlight. We're a flashlight and we're shining light in sort of dark corners. And that that illumination is for me so people can make safer choices, but also for bees so that they can know, you know, in, in our premise, and we'd like to do some more research around this, but a key premise for our entire ethos is that respectful relationships are better for me and bees. This isn't just, you know, uh, you know, power to the people. <laughs> this is this is that it, it it will it will ultimately be better because I, I say this is another one of my taglines. But surveillance capitalism is, you know, easy money and lazy marketing. It, it's it gives the appearance of of relationships, but they're not relationships at all. Surveilled surveilled relationships, if you can, if you even want to call that a relationship, that is not a relationship. It's just um, it's it's delusional, frankly. And I think, um, it, you know, I, I think it will come to pass and there will be research to support this, that a respectful relationship with a me, a meaningful, respectful relationship with, with um, people using your technology 
will result in more loyal, more faithful customers, deeper understanding of the customers that you have, deeper understanding of potential customers. I believe that very firmly. So global privacy control, I believe you've been involved in the W3C working with this. And I think that's such a good example of a technology that is easy to understand. People can apply it. I know it only apply, it only works with the CCPA and the opt-out on, on the browser now for do not sell, I believe. It'd be great if it could work with the future of privacy regulation, the future sort of cookie framework in Europe. But do you see yourselves developing something like that at some point? And maybe I'm going back to the first question, but let's see what you think. I don't know that the Me2B Alliance will actually, um, I mean, we could be getting into that kind of stuff, but that, that's a very tactical standard too. You know, it's, it's the browser header. And so we're more likely to just, um, we're more interested in getting our ethos and our point of view around respect, like what respectful is and, and that so everybody can use that yardstick when they're creating standards and, you know, and all of the standards that are out there. Um, yeah. Lisa, thank you. Who would you invite to join uh, me to be? Yeah, everybody. Um, you know, if, if you want to learn, if you're a me who wants to better understand what's going on, or if you want to have a say in what respectful means to you and how we translate that into the standard, Come on in. If you're a B and you want, and you know, and, and you know, you want to treat your your end users right, please join us. Lawyers, policymakers, you know, that that bridging the gap between technology and and legal is is a is a significant challenge in the world right now. So, yeah, come on in. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Okay, that's all for today. Please find episode notes and links to our social channels and other feeds on mastersofprivacy.com. Please do not give us five stars on your favorite podcasting channel unless you believe there is no more room for improvement. Your candid feedback is probably more useful to us. Thank you. <laughs>